Welcome YouTube friends and family. This is Future Kim popping in to tell you, I originally planned to do this video as one video, but it got way too long. So there will be a part two. So this is a combination pantry organization, pantry clean out, pantry tour video to help me prepare to plant my 2023 garden. So taking stock of what I have, what I don't want to grow, what I do want to grow. Stay tuned for part two, which will be coming in a subsequent day. And I hope you enjoy today's video. Welcome YouTube friends and family to today's adventures of the Wellness Homesteader. So don't judge my cleanliness y'all, I'm cleaning. But today I am getting started with my summer garden planning. Now you may wonder, why are you sitting, let me see if I can show you this, in front of your little whoopsie pantries with all of this stuff on the floor? Well, twice a year. Hi, Frank Frank, you got home, Mom Mom? Do you wanna say hi to the peoples? Hello, Frankies, yes. He's very interested in what I'm doing. He's like, you making messes, Mom Mom. <laughs> But twice a year, I go through all of my home canned goods and I do a test. So I wipe my lids, I look at the product and I lift it by the flat, if you will, to make sure that it's still sealed, it's still good. So far I haven't found anything that isn't sealed, but why am I cleaning out my pantry if I'm gonna do, be doing summer garden planning? Well, stay tuned to find out my method. Well, first and foremost, it's always good to keep a really good eye on your pantry and what you've canned. And I try to get through everything in two years, but the reason I'm kind of doing a deep dive into my pantry is not just to check my jars, that's a big part of it, but I also wanna see what am I out of, what am I very low on, what do I have way too much of? <laughs> I'm gonna share a couple things with you so that I can actually plan my garden space. So, you know, do I need to grow more tomatoes? Do I need to grow less hot peppers? Mm, that's a hard one for me. Um, I purchase fruit because I only grow strawberries. Um, do I need more fruit to can or did I really get through it? So those types of things are what I look for. Now, I'm gonna be fully honest with you. Sometimes I can things for my mother. And y'all know, if you've been with my channel, that my mom is now in an assisted living. She's been there for about a year. So in 2021, I canned kind of an old timey dish called spiced apples. And my mom loves spiced apples. Mm. <laughs> but then she was like, nope, I'm all set on that. And she did the same thing with the applesauce. So I have six half pint jars. Guys, I don't like it. I'm not gonna eat it. I'm gonna actually empty the jars out, wash them, lesson learned. Uh, I'm low on pie filling. So I just have a very little bit of apple pie filling and a couple peach. And I thought I had cherry, but I haven't gotten to it yet. But one of the things I'm noticing is because my pantry gets a little fuller in winter because of all the summer bounty that I've canned. Oh, got to get comfortable here, guys. Um, I have a tendency just to be like, okay, where's our space? Perfect. So I'm trying to organize my pantry a little bit better. I'm super excited because guess what I found? two jars of sweet onion jam, my absolute, oops, that's a spiced apple, my absolute favorite. I also thought that I opened my last jar of salsa. I found three from 2021. So you all probably don't have this problem, but I do. I'm limited on space. And not only do I have home canned goods here, I have a lot in my pantry. Now that is primarily, Frankie's watching the chicken girls. It's primarily broth and things like that. So I kind of know what's in there, but I don't know really well what's in here. And again, I want to check it. So here's just a good example. I made some apple scrap vinegar and um, I vacuum sealed the jar and I forgot about it. <laughs> and y'all, can I interest you in a half gallon of moonshine? Y'all, this turned to straight up alcohol. 
like, mm, it's not vinegar. It is so boozy. So that also is going to have to go. So I need to be a better steward of the food that I do have and make sure I'm, I'm caring for it well. I'm thinking I might have to go to quarterly on my food organization. I have two areas in my kitchen that I keep food as well, but that food is more um, store purchased and I offload from my bulk pantry into smaller containers for cooking. So flour, sugar, oats, cream of wheat, um, and then other things that I buy like crackers and cereals, that type of stuff. So I got everything removed out of the pantry, everything organized. I also keep some canning supplies in there like pectin or citric acid or canning salt. So I was able to take a look at that. Let's see, the other thing that I noticed, I'm down to four pint or half pint jars of cowboy candy. So um, definitely I'm gonna want to grill jalapenos. I always do. Um, I need to stop canning beans. <laughs> I've got enough beans for all of us. But it gave me a thought. I know I'm low on green beans. I'm talking about kidney beans, great northern beans, those kind of beans, chili beans. Um, I do need to grow more green beans because I know I'm almost out because I've been kind of rationing those. And also onions. I want lots of sweet onion jam. I use this in my meatloaf. Now I want a meatloaf. Might have to thaw out some hamburger. So I'm gonna continue cleaning. This video is going to be recorded over a couple days. Tomorrow it is supposed to be like 52. So I wanna take a look at my garden beds. I have something green growing. I'm like, wait, it's been in the single digits last week. How is something green growing? So I may do a little work in the garden, see if there's anything that needs repaired as well. Like do I have a problem with any of my beds, etc. I use raised beds. And since I have added two more beds in the fall that I've never planted, I have two four by eight beds that I can plant whatever I want. I have my lessons and all my records from last year, the year before, the year before, the year before that I can look at and get to plant in the garden. So I'm going to share that process with you. I hope you'll find it interesting. I know it's only February 6th, but you know what? It'll be seed starting time in about a month and I want to be ready. So I will see you all, whoops, maybe if I can get up, <laughs> I'll see you all probably out in the garden. I will be showing the chicken coop and uh, letting those girly girls run the yard. So it'll be, it'll be a fun video. All right, Good morning y'all. Day two of garden planning, pantry cleaning and all the things I, um, I'm outside, as you can see, it is supposed to rain all day, although it's it's pretty nice and warm. So for those of you who are new, and y'all, I had my fence repaired, and so ignore the new post versus the old fence. It'll all turn the same color. What I have here is two new beds. So here, let me, uh, okay, I'm going the wrong way. <laughs> In here, and these are four foot by eight foot. And that will be a totally new planting space for me. Then in the middle here, we have six four by four beds. And in the back, I have a four by eight and over here, a four by eight. So I have a lot of space I can plant. Plus I have a veggie pod, which is a four foot square covered. Ah, did I do it right? Yes. So I can do herbs. Um, I do some container gardening. I have a green stock for my strawberries. I thought I would come out and show you the girly girls and their new run because they're very excited to share with you. Hello, girly girls. There's Miss Marigold. That is Jolene. That's the I Fancy Ray. And then this is my sweet Violet. Yes, you guys all want camera time. I know, are you telling them about your new playhouse? So y'all, I can try to link this in the description box below. This is quite a huge run. It's narrower, of course you can see by the grass, than what my last one was, but it's about four foot longer and they absolutely love it. What I like about this, I like the um, tapered roof. 
so you're not just having a snow burden on the top. Things do run off. Yeah, hi girls. Hi girls, what you want? And they can stay dry under this big tarp because they're not smart enough to go in out of the rain. The reason I'm not letting them free range today is this, because I do not want them. What babies? Yeah, tell mama what you about it. Yeah, tell mama. Okay, you all got quiet. Um, they will get scared of the thunder and I don't want them scared. They don't particularly care for the rain. <laughs> so what I have done here and y'all excuse their uh, dust bathing pool. I need new sand and it's hard to keep it dry. I'm going to move it under the tarp. I think that will be better. So this is the chicken coop I built um, initially. It has served me so well, y'all. I cannot tell you. There goes Miss Marigold in to bring me an egg. I can't tell you how much I love it, but I just bungee, girl repair, I just bungee the doors together. What girlies? Um, and then they can run back and forth between their food, their water, their laying box. What, you nosy? Is your, is your nose hurting you? Get Mary Golden, you just want, you want, you want people to see you? Yeah, they see you. You can lay your eggy. It's okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I think so. So, this is my new setup. I've promised and promised I would show you. These two are always together and usually Marigold and Violet are together. So Violet's kind of the loner, but she's the sweetest, aren't you girl? See, I'm the sweetest. I love my mommy. Mm-hmm. Hey. And this is Jolene, my escape artist, trying to figure out whether she can get through this crack. Hey, you know better. <laughs> All right. All right, y'all, back inside and I'm in my long-term pantry. My job today is to totally clean and organize this pantry. Um, I've already started. That's why there's things on the floor, jars on the floor, stuff on the floor. And there were a few items like this buttermilk powder that I wanna put in my one gallon glass jars that I have here ready to go with my labels because I don't like to store anything in plastic. Pardon me. <coughs> it also gives me a really good chance to make sure that my oldest product is at the front because sometimes when I go to the grocery, I'm just like, mm, put it away and I'm not moving it to the back. So I'll get things reorganized. I do have home canned goods here, primarily broth, but there are other things. So what I'm gonna say about that is I will do the same process that I did for my two pantries in my great room. I will go through everything. I will show you a final final when I get done and talk about what lessons I learned because um, um, I learned a few. You know, so I'm, I love to can, y'all. I'd rather, like canning is like crafting, is like a party, it's like a vacation. <laughs> I just, I love it. And I way over can certain things. And like any of us, sometimes you will can something and you just don't like it. You just don't get through it. And you have to make the decision, do I go ahead and waste that amount of food if, if you can't feed it to the chickens? Or can I gift it? Can I share it? Can I bless someone else with that? You know, I had a few things that I'm like, I am never going to eat this. It was mm, nasty. And I think I'm a good cook. <coughs> Pardon me, y'all. I don't know why I'm coughing. I'm not sick. I'll say that much. So I'm going to work on really getting organized. I have a few buckets that don't have gamma lids, and I was able to get them from Azure finally. So what a gamma lid is, if you don't know, this ring snaps on the bucket. Then this lid seals tightly. It's a way you can keep your whole grains fresh free from critters, but what I can tell you, y'all, it's like a whole thing getting these rings snapped on, and <coughs> I kind of gave up. So, I'm going to get busy. I'll try to bring you back to show you the final final, tell you what I've learned, and then we can finally get into some garden planning. So, stay tuned. Okay, y'all, I'm going to show you my little trick. So, I'm going to say ladies, because gentlemen are strong enough to do it. These 
are a bear. <laughs> they are a total bear to get on. You're supposed to use a rubber, well, it says snap them into place. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> I can't. My hands are not strong enough. I've tried using a rubber mallet. I have no success with that. So do not try this at home, but <laughs> this works for me. And it's like the only way I have been able to get the lids on. So I've got my stool and I've got this nice sturdy shelf to hold on to. So I'm not going to fall down and I'm going to actually stand on the bucket. And then what you want to do is stomp it into place. Hear it snap. I think I got it. Yeah, buddy. And that, if y'all are having trouble with your gamma lids, I used to have to get, wait until I had a man to help me, you know? So I'm short a gamma lid. I don't know how I did that, but I have one on order. So we are all good. I am making great progress and I'm really anxious to show you the final, final. I don't know if I can get it done today, but I'm going to try. All right. Stay okay, tuned. Okay, y'all. I did it. <laughs> now, before I show you what I've done and share some things that I learned about myself, I want to put this out here. My house is 25 years old. It needs... Um, two of everything <laughs> and, and I don't worry about decor and it's not Pinterest worthy. So I did the best that I could do with what I have without having to spend a lot of money. I will try to link some things for you all. Um, but I actually have four main areas in my home that I store food. You've all seen my teeny weeny kitchen. Um, and it, it's not that small, it just does not have a lot of storage in it. I would have done it totally different, but I didn't build this house. I only purchased it. <laughs> so I have purchased these lock and lock style containers, you know, that have the four tabs look like this. And that's as healthy choice because it is 10 grain hot cereal. And I didn't have a sticker at the time and I'm going to share with you the new stickers that I got and why I like them better. So what I did was I went through my entire pantry or my entire Lazy Susan, excuse me, wiped it out, um, made sure it was in uh, alphabetical order. That's how I roll. Um, and then I have a few things over here that aren't in the lock and locks or I call them lock and locks. Um, I actually used every single one of them I don't even have a spare one, so I would have to buy another set <laughs> or a partial set or something. But this really is kind of my go-to um, when I'm actively cooking in the kitchen. So I have things like baking soda, baking powder. Um, here's my whole a bite of wheat gluten, powdered peanut butter, some noodles, some panko, powdered sugar, raisins. I have one that when I do a specialty recipe, I have some specialty items like um, a special black cocoa that I use. Um, here's seeds and sunflower seeds. And then this is my sugar-free jello for my smoothies. Um, yeast flakes on the bottom down here. Let me go back. Because it's in reverse alphabetical order. I have um, baking soda, baking powder, cornstarch, chocolate chips, cocoa powder, something without a label, quinoa cornmeal, let's see if I got a quinoa label, uh, chickpea powder, flour, dried fruits, salt, flax seed, and then some of my collagens, a jar, big jar of egg noodles, and some vanilla that I'm working on. I'm trying it out of glycerin instead of using alcohol. So far, guys, it's a, it's a hard lose. <laughs> to dump the glycerin um it's just vegetable glycerin and um get myself some hooch all right let me take you to my second small pantry talk about what i did there 
share with you a couple things that I think will help me be more organized. And my bow stand is straight up, y'all. You know how hard I've worked today. I have, it smells amazing in here. I have a meatloaf and baked potatoes in the oven, and I'm going to open some um, carrots. All right, stay tuned. All right, y'all. This is the pantry that is in the kitchen. And what I like to do is keep all of my flowers and baking supplies. Um, I have all-purpose flour, raw flour, pardon me, um, stevia, raw sugar, oatmeal, stevia, brown sugar, some rice, and then this is crackers. This is like vinegars, um, unusual oils. I have some oatmeal, like uh, Scottish oats. If you've never had them, they're not rolled oats. They're really, really good. Cream of wheat. I purchased this um, dispenser, y'all. It's amazing. Let me show you. It's, it might be a little crooked here. So I have foil, parchment, and plastic. See how it has this cutter? And this is bamboo. So I just pull it out. You can mount it on the wall as well. Guys, excuse the dark circles under my eyes. Um, the other thing I purchased, I love. I've been using the reusable, um, I'll call them baggies. And so I have some disposable ones. If I have, oops. And some, don't wanna break the shelf that are the reusable. So it has gallon quart snack and sandwich, super helpful. Then in the bottom, I have things like Frankie's food. <laughs> well, it's it's too low to see. Frankie's food, the mixer, those type things. So I hate the wire shelves. I've hated them since I moved in here. You may notice I <laughs> have cardboard on the shelves because otherwise when you set something on it what happens is it just it goes like this and it's so annoying I also put a rack on my door and what I have on the rack oh lord is I'm gonna say overflow so like all my honeys that I use overflow like of, here's garlic powder, parsley, my uh, everything soup mix, guys, it goes all the way down. I have the trash bags, I have the cat treats. So it's just um, some extra storage space because when you have a closet that's really, really deep, ooh, I changed the lighting. I mean, this is like armpit deep. I can't see what's behind there. Now I do have some things behind. As you see, I have my tea box and my extra tea. Here I have some of, oh, you can't even see what I'm doing here. I have some of my extra um, foil type things. Up the very top, I have my candy things like my pectin, um, gosh, salsa mix, some attachments for the mixer, that type of stuff. So it, this has really helped me having this rack on the door because these things would fall over, they would fall in the crack, I could never find anything I needed. So what I can say is everything in this pantry has been fully looked at, expiration dates, blah, blah, blah. It's all fresh, it's all labeled, it's all organized as the Lazy Susan has stayed organized. That, that has been a good system for me. Now let's go over to my home canned goods. And y'all, this is where I really learned a lesson and maybe it will be helpful to you as well. Stay tuned. So the timer went off for my meatloaf. I have two baked potatoes that were larger, so I'm gonna give it another 15. So let me let me share, you know, consign it <laughs> kind of some things that might be helpful to you all as you're going through your pantries. So I have two of these cabinets on a sliding door. I'm not gonna go through every item, y'all. But here's what I can tell you. This is all my jellies. <laughs> and if you all are like, you're not supposed to stack your jars, go to the ball or the mason jar website and look, it's totally fine to stack. So actually these two are both full of jelly. So that was one of the first things I learned. And y'all, I'm just gonna tell you, there's a jelly video coming up. <laughs> 
because I made some more jelly. Um, I love making jelly. I love gifting jelly. However, I had made a few kinds of jelly that I did not care for. And I made a lot of jelly because my mom ate like a jar of jelly a week or more. My mom likes her sweets, but she doesn't do that anymore because now she is in an assisted living. So that's my excuse. But actually I just made too much. So one of the things on my do not make, and you all have to keep me to my word, is no jelly this year. Down below, I have carrots, green beans, and on the very bottom shelf, either soup or soup starter. I definitely need to grow more green beans and I need to grow and can more carrots. I also have sweet potatoes in there and it's not, I like sweet potatoes, it's just not something that I reach for. So, I'm not gonna grow sweet potatoes and I'm not going to can them. If I want sweet potatoes, I can order them from Azure, I can do whatever, but I'm not gonna give up any garden space for it. Over on the other side, I have homemade cranberry mustard, all of my ketchups, pizza sauces, some taco meat, some sloppy joe meat. I'm not getting through that, I need to do better with that. I have, um, Overflow tomatoes. I have a lot of tomatoes left, but y'all, I still need to can more because, you know, this is only February. I won't have tomatoes to can till around August. So I have February, March, April, May, June, July. I have probably six months more. They'll be gone. Uh, this is butternut squash soup mix. I love having those ready-mades. I want to continue to can that. Down below here are all my dehydrated things and my freeze-dried things like spices, medicinal herbs, things like that. I did have some dehydrated fruit that was totally spoiled, even though it was sealed, it just was left too long. So another thing, I don't get through fruit and it's, it's kind of a waste of money as with the cost of fruit to be dehydrating because I don't like the texture of it. So uh, freeze drying, if I'm going to do that, is definitely going to be the best way. Okay, let's go to the second I'm cabinet. I'm just gonna apologize for the lighting because it's too hard to plug the ring light in. So this is what I have left of tomatoes, which is um, 12 quarts and I think four pints. That's not very much. When I make a soup, I, I use a quart every single time, so we'll go through that. Uh, I do have <laughs> I do have some bell peppers still canned. I have some salsa. I have a little bit of jalapenos, uh, hot banana peppers, a little bit of cowboy candy. Down below, I have my home canned french fries, which I need to use, but um, I don't have a lot. I have about six pints of those left. I only have two pickle relish, so that's something I want to grow. On the very bottom, y'all, are all the beans, like pinto beans, kidney beans, black beans, uh, chili bean starter. I need to stop canning beans. <laughs> so that was one lesson. All right, over on this side, I'll show you here. I have all of my canisters of things that I go for. So my bread flour, my sugar, my brown sugar, and my um, semola flour for pasta. This is my fruit section. And y'all, here, here's just the truth of it. I'm not eating it, I'm not utilizing it. One thing I did realize is I haven't been making yogurt. That's generally how I use it. So I need to knock off uh, making anything more canned fruit because I'm not using it. It's kind of silly to do that and get through this because some of this was canned in 2020. So I need to get through it. Uh, below that is our pie fillings. And I did find my cherry pie filling, but it's in the long-term pantry. So uh, I don't have a lot of pie filling. So that's something I will be doing with fruit. And then on the very bottom, guys, is more fruit. Peaches and syrup, um, blueberries and honey. And again, I need to find a use for that and be a good steward of my food. Y'all, that meatloaf 
was the bomb. <laughs> oh, I used my sweet onion jam I found. So I did want to make one thing really clear in case you think I spent a lot of money doing this pantry reorganization. So the containers that I showed you in the Lazy Susan, I've had for two or three years. Oh, just, I was just in the chicken coop. It looks like I brought some bedding with me. Um, the labels, you know, I got back then as well. The over the door rack. Okay, I got it out of a dumpster. <laughs> I've had it for like 10 years, but it works great. And of course, the cabinets you've seen in many videos. So I didn't have to spend any money. I just had to get things organized. And let me tell you all, this room was kind of a walk of shame for me. Before we get into that, let me share with you the one thing I did purchase and talk about labels versus labels. So I have these really neat cursive labels and um, it, it they're, they're pretty comprehensive, I can say that. The problem that I find with them, I might have something in a container and decide, okay, I'm gonna keep a smaller quantity, I'm gonna put it in a smaller container, then I'm gonna reuse the bigger container for something else. Those stickers are the devil to get off. So I purchased this, and I will link it, um, Pantry Labels, and I bought this back on Amazon Prime Days, just saying. These are super pretty. So this is what they look like. They're all business, right? Um, what can I say about this? Just in full disclosure, so, disclosure, so y'all know, some of the things that I needed, I'm trying to find here, some of the funny things. Um, they didn't have a, you know, a sticker for. And then they have a lot of really weird things like, collagen peptides powder, um, creatine monohydrate powder, electrolyte powder, um, French lentils, uh, isopure protein powder, maca powder. So, you know, just, just some different ones, but they also have the uh, Best Buy date so you can do that as well. They would be great for your canning jars. And they also have blank ones. And it does come with a marking pen. I really like the looks of these. It's really tidy. And they're vinyl. <clears throat> Pardon me, vinyl. So they're a little bit easier to get on and off. Because, guys, I'm going to switch up my jars. And I'm probably going to have to continue to purchase labels on, you know, an intermittent basis. So... What did I need to do in here? And before I even get into that, I'm gonna talk a little bit about what I learned and why I'm in the situation I'm in. So when I first uh, was unable to work and applied for social security disability, the average time to get approved is in the state of Ohio is three years, five months. Um, I was approved first go around Kind of made me feel like I had one foot in the grave, like they thought, was she going to die? <laughs> but I hadn't. And usually you have an average of three hearings to contest the rejection. Um, and actually, guys, I had worked 42 years full time. Uh, and so I had a, a long, strong work history in my age and my diagnoses I got through. But it took about... Mm -mm, nine months. So I did not have income coming in from Social Security yet. I was very blessed that I had both short and long ter term disability from work. However, that was not a paycheck. So let me just put that out there. So I went to the food pantry. That was a long story, Kim. Stop telling long stories. The food pantry was such a blessing to me. I still have food from the food pantry that I'm using. Y'all, I've done food pantry hauls early on in my channel um, because once my Social Security disability was approved, you have a long waiting period before you're eligible for Medicare. So I had to buy marketplace insurance, which was over $1,000 a month. So the food pantry was very helpful to me. However, I had food that I 
would not eat. And that's not a criticism of the food pantry. It's just a fact. I didn't eat it. A lot of its Best Buy dates were um, 2019. It's not something that I can gift. It wasn't anything I was willing to feed to my chickens. So yes, I threw away some food. The biggest thing I learned from this pantry is to stop when I go to the grocery store, just throwing things in the front and not doing the um, first in, first out. So not putting it in the back. I do keep a Sharpie so I can write expiration dates on cans. And if I'm tired from shopping and I don't feel like stocking it, I have a table here. I'm going to put it on the table and not do that again because I literally had to unload every shelf, look at, and some of them did not have the date on it, and then reorganize them. So this took me a long time and I'm really proud of it. Also, I am short one of these gamma lids, but I had purchased some new gamma lids because I had buckets that didn't have gamma lids. I feel a lot better about the storage of my grains that way. And I think the easiest way to show you what's in this pantry, and, and guys, I know they say don't show your pantry. So I'm just going to tell you a little something, something. Me and Ethel, <laughs> we're watching you. Don't come for me. Ethel is my um, G-U-N, and I am an amazing shot, and I won't miss. So don't, don't, don't even bother, y'all. <laughs> All right. That was just kind of a funny. I'm going to actually take the camera off the tripod, and I'm going to pan through. I'm not going to show you everything. Um, and then I'm going to give you some final thoughts about garden planning. And then we're going to get to the garden planning, but not today because I'm about worn out. All right. Stay okay. tuned. Up top, I am keeping things like my rice cooker, my electric pressure canner, some things I don't use very often makes it really, really easy. I also have, and this is super old, one of these label maker jobbers. This is a Dymo, I think, is the brand. So I did label my shelves, but the labels don't stick very well. So I have all my nuts and dried fruit. I do vacuum seal everything. These are some overflow grains that don't fit in the buckets that are sealed in mylar bags. I have some miscellaneous baking supplies here, you know, for holiday cooking, that type of thing. Now this still needs its lid, but I have things like cornmeal, bread flour, all-purpose flour. There is raw flour. So these are kind of ready to use. I have semola, which is what I make my pasta out of. I have some um, quick oats back there for certain desserts that I make. Down at the very bottom, we're going to skip a shelf, is where I have my whole grains. So I have soft red, hard red, yellow corn. And then in between here, I have all my milk and milk products. So I've sealed them, vacuum sealed them in jars. Wow, I made a mess too when I did that. Honeys and alternative sugars like um, the de demerara sugar, the you know natural sugars, coconut sugar, honey powder. I have a lot of honey and maple syrup in the back. Then over here, all my, my salt stash guys, <laughs> my pink Himalayan. Then these are things I use for canning. So I have lemon juices, some canning salt, I have vinegars in the back. Down at the very bottom, because I have so much, I vacuum seal my sugar, guys, in sometimes quarts, sometimes half-gallon jars. Um, never put an oxygen absorber in or you will have a sugar brick. So that works out really well. Behind my buckets, I have other things like spelt and rye. So all of those are whole grains. Now, well, so I have it labeled for sugars and whole grains. When I originally started my pantry, this is a little alcove. Um, I only had these two shelves. Up top here, just to make it really, really simple, is a ton of different cleaning products, soaps, dish liquid, extra dish towels, brushes, scrub brushes, that kind of thing. I have a lot of protein type collagen supplements that I utilize. Here I have, um, not soap herbs, I have health and beauty in here. So extra deodorant. These are um, COVID tests, hand sanitizers, that type of stuff. So this is a non-food non area to a food area. Down here are grocery store items and then different herbs. 
and maybe some things that I purchased, like I have some elderberries back there that I, you know, grew and then sage, etc. Um, I have some medicinal herbs like licorice root and valerian root, but, and some spicy. I do have some store purchased items, guys. I love the suddenly salad. I have a little bit of spaghetti. I have some rice aroni. I have some stuffing mixes. These are um, from the food pantry, as is the uh, mashed potatoes. Some stuffing mix, some protein drinks, some um, health herbal supplements as well. This is kind of a mishmash here. This is a lot of condiments, I would say. So, um, you know, like salad dressing, if I'm not going to make it homemade, mayonnaise is, I thought it was out. I bought one and I had one. Peanut butter. Then some of my things I use for soap, like that's a bucket of lard back there, but it can be used for cooking. On the very bottom, I have oils. Over here is actually laundry supplies. Then I have some artificial sweeteners, some coffee, and then some baking mixes. A lot of these also came from the food pantry. Moving on to the second shelf, I have canned soups, canned fruit, canned veg. You can see in the, and these racks are wonderful. Then we're moving into my overflow that won't fit in my cupboards of my home canning. So I have chicken broth here. I have sloppy joes and the pints of chicken broth. I have all the applesauce I made my mother that she decided she didn't like. <laughs> Not that she didn't like it, she just got tired of it. These are all uh, pints of sloppy joes. Then down here I have more beans, y'all. Then I have a few canned um, items like spam, y'all. I love spam, uh, manwich, and then store canned tomato products. These are the organic tomato paste that I buy from Azure that are absolutely amazing. All of these came from the food pantry, and I will just tell you that a lot of them are past their best by date, so I'll have to open and evaluate. Them. This shelf was my last edition. <laughs> I'm running out of room. So I keep things like my um, mean making supplies, my kombucha supplies, things I don't use very much, my big bowls. I have my crock pot, my instant pot. These are all overflow of paper products. Uh, a lot of this came from my mom's. Oh, so I have plenty. <laughs> this is my vacuum sealing area. My air fryer, my Zojirushi. Down here, I have some of my freeze-dried meals that you just add water to. Some Bear Creek just add water. You know, if, if we don't have power, this makes a good meal. Uh, it makes eight servings. And then we start moving into all of the beans and grains and rice here. But before we do that, down here at the bottom... I have 21 gallons of water, a couple extra bottled waters, bunch of batteries. Swinging around to the other side, up top is still things I don't use very much, my extra egg cartons, all the napkins I, pardon me, rescued from my mother. And then here we have, oh, there's an applesauce. How'd I miss that? I probably set it up there. All of my freeze-dried goods. So these are beautiful eggs from my girly girls. I have dried tomatoes. I have whole dried tomatoes that can be reconstituted. Lots of freeze-dried fruit here. I love the texture of freeze-dried products. Some jalapenos, some hash browns, lots and lots of hot peppers, guys. I love me some hot peppers. And then tomatoes in the back. Food processor, green mill. Moving down another shelf. Pinto beans, split peas, chickpeas, brown rice, lentils, these are our leather britches that we did together. Barley, white rice, navy beans. And then on the very bottom, there's my cherry pie filling, y'all. A little bit of cranberry sauce. I'm down to two. Um, I have some cranberries in the freezer, so I don't eat this super often, so I'm probably pretty good on that. I have a lot of onion broth, and I still have an overflow of tomatoes, y'all. So, and then over here is all my pasta making supplies. And then this, y'all aren't supposed to see, but this is my painting stuff 
for when I finally get my entryway done. Final quick word. My freeze dryer is here with my trays, my impulse sealer, my um, Mylar bags, my oxygen absorbers. And then I have this little table here. I have a couple butternut squash. I have some overflow of organizing items that I may use in my kitchen. I never throw an organizing item away. Down below, Azure had a special, so I bought um, another bucket of hard red and then the soft white was a free item that was given to me by the Azure driver as the drop coordinator. I also, you'll see, keep some jars in here, and that is for storage purposes. If I get something from Azure, I always like taking it out of the bag and getting it into a jar and vacuum sealed. So let me give you all some final thoughts as I've worked on this two-day project. And I do have some talking notes, so I don't forget to say what I need to say. I definitely need to be a better steward of the resources that I have. I did find when I went through my pantry, two jars that were unsealed, one jar that was not unsealed but did not look right and had mold and I could just pull the lid off so it was almost unsealed. So I've decided I'm going to start going through my pantries on a quarterly basis and I'm gonna do a better job of organizing. I'm going to make sure I first in, first out. So using the oldest product first, watching those best by dates. And I don't just throw something away because it's past its best by date. Believe me. The things I've decided not to can are pickles, jelly, fruit, applesauce, <laughs> sweet potatoes, beans, and meat. Y'all, I'm kind of going on a back to more of a vegetarian diet and I have a lot of canned meat on the shelf. I have turkey, I have chicken, I have sausage. Yeah, I have all the things. So I'm not gonna be canning any more meat and I'm not purchasing any more meat. What do we need more of? Green beans, carrots, onions, potatoes, garlic, jalapenos, bell peppers, pumpkin, I have just like maybe two pints of pumpkin, which probably wouldn't even make a pie. And then also anything ready-made on the shelf for a soup or a meal. I don't wanna just eat beans and carrots. I want to grow other things. I wanna grow greens. I wanna grow spinach. I wanna go grow radishes. I wanna grow broccoli. I want some more root type vegetables. I need a good storage solution if y'all have any. This room stays dark, um, but it, it it's like an average temperature. It's cool in the winter, but it's warmer in the summer. So I have a couple butternut squash. These have stayed pretty well, and that's one of the things I definitely want to grow is some butternut squash. So now I know what I need, what I don't need. Tomorrow, You'll see me in a different outfit, maybe without these dark circles, y'all. I think it might be fallout from my eyeshadow. <laughs> I'm trying to learn some makeup, guys, and so just like pass that by. Don't don't let that get to you. <laughs> so tomorrow, I'm going to sit down, draw out my garden beds, take a look at my seeds, and show you how I'm going to plan my 2023 garden. Stay tuned. I hope you all have enjoyed today's video. Don't forget, I'm future Kim, <laughs> that there is a part two coming up where I'm actually going to sit down, draw out my garden beds. We're going to be going through seeds. We're going to look at what's available locally, what I want to grow from seed, what I want to seed start. So you don't want to miss part two. So I will see you very soon. If you could do me a big favor, go ahead and smash that like button and share my video. If you know somebody who needs some motivation to clean out, organize, inventory their pantry. And until I see you again, y'all know what to do. Be healthy, be well, be blessed, and take care.